Last time on Doki Doki Tropical Rain. Yuri, that was one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made. I forgive you, but why me? Why were you thinking about me? Here goes. Because I love. I cleared my throat. Because I wanted to date you. Okay. Quit overthinking this. Finn doesn't hate her. And if, if he really loved her, he wouldn't begin hating her over something like that. It's gonna be okay. All you had to do. She took a deep breath, closed her eyes, and smiled. Let's go and tell him that you accept his confession. I accept your confession. Uh, confession? You mean like, like I was talking about earlier, at school? Yes, Finn. I mean, I accept your romantic confession. Holy sh- She wasn't kidding, and she doesn't hate me. I felt I could cry tears of joy. Well, we got Yuri. Woo! We got him. We got her, fellow knights. Just move on. Move on already, dang it. Forget about him. Forget about his personality. Forget about his interests. Forget about his smile. His haircut that he combed for you. Dang it. Why? Why is it so hard? Why is it so hard? So hard to just forget. So hard to just move on. He never loved you. She began to bawl. None of it meant anything to him. And he forgot about you practically instantly. <laughs>Christmas is nearing, and the temperature has started to nip a little bit more. Oh, this music. Um, before I continue, can I just say how good this music is, aside from the other ones from the previous episodes? But out of the OSTs in this mod so far, this one right here is my favorite. Funnily enough, I listened to this one on YouTube, and I think Pumpkin Brain is the composer of this one, so... Uh, Xavier, Pumpkin Brain, if you're watching this, you really did an amazing job in this mod, and especially the music. <laughs> oh man, I, this one right here is my favorite out of the bunch. I hope my dad isn't getting too pissed at the heating bill. But anyway, I was getting a little worried at how the holidays are going to go down. I know it would have been a little early, but I prayed Yuri didn't ask me to come spend it with her with her parents or something. I wasn't sure if I could handle that. If they're anything like Yuri, they may be rather pompous. That's not to say Yuri was snobby, but she definitely carried herself in a certain way. A way I'm not sure I would have been able to match. Well, I, I guess I could say Yuri works in mysterious ways that I really do not know. Because, well, I'm normal. Probably be as basic as they come. Frankly, I would rather just spend Christmas with the girls. But heck, that may be even a tough choice. I guess we could, like, host a Christmas party over, the, uh, over at the club if Monica would accept that. Oh yeah, Monica. I, I don't know how will that go either with her after what happened previously, but still. Club tensions are a little high. Granted, Monica seems to be doing rather okay, if a little more robotic than before. Though, there is a way that the club used to operate before all of that stuff went down. And all of us can tell things have changed. I scrubbed extra hard on the dish to try and get rid of a stain. Dang thing. Well, anyway. I can always invite Sayori over, but I'm a little concerned about her. In a club, she seems empty. When she's not forcing herself to be bubbly, she's just staring at her desk. I hope what happened between me and Monica didn't affect... Finn, look. I perked up. What's up? They're making a movie of for Portrait of Markov. I looked around the pillar we had in the kitchen and over at the television. It was hard to see because of the glare, but I could hear the audio. Uh, 
Wow. Because they are a movie adaptation. Well, I would see that for like a dollar. I turned to Yuri. She seemed to be knitting something. Oh, I didn't know you liked to knit. She seemed surprised but instantly hid what she was working on. Is she embarrassed? Uh, uh, I... It's just a hobby of mine. Well, that's cool. But why are you embarrassed about it? I voiced my thoughts. Uh... You don't have to be embarrassed about what you like while around me, Yuri. I'm your boyfriend. If I don't support you what you like, then that's... Kind of a dick move. Exactly. We then in that case we weren't we aren't uh, compatible with each other if we don't support each other's hobbies and what we like and all that jazz. I mean, for granted, um, anyone or everyone has their own preferences and dislikes and all that stuff. But we have to respect that, really. But especially when we have something we love to do, like what I'm doing right now. Of course, you guys would support me and all that kinds of stuff, and I really appreciate it. I couldn't see her blushing face. Ah, of course, because she's uh she's embarrassed right now. But still, it's cute. She smiled. Thank you. It means a lot to hear f that from you. <laughs> You're welcome, Yuri. I nodded and she went back to knitting. I tilted my head to see what she was exactly knitting. It looked something... gray. I couldn't tell exactly what it was, but I could see the condition of her knitting needles. I may not be good at knitting or know anything about it, but even I could see that they looked trashed. They even looked slightly rusty. She's not putting the rust anywhere near the actual product, but it seems to be a struggle for her to do so. She could probably buy new ones, either that or ask her parents for some. But anyway, that wasn't really my business. For all I knew, they could have sentimental value. What about that movie? Would you want to see that movie when it comes out? She nodded enthusiastically. I'd love that. Sounds like a plan then. <laughs> uh, same feeling when I watched the Sonic movie 2 on cinemas and that was one of the best sequels to come out nowadays. And I'm not gonna spoil too much about that right here because of course I wouldn't. As I continued to wash the dishes, and Yuri continued to knit. It was a calm evening. Oh, and would you like to continue reading Portrait of Markov together? I'm not sure if you've, um, finished it or not, but I would like to read with you. She began to mutter. Or should of Markov or not? Sure. That'll be fun. Mm-hmm. She went back to what she was doing, as did I. At least, until I was interrupted by a timer going off. Ah, that's dinner. I stopped the timer and grabbed my pot holders. I opened up the oven and slowly pulled out a dish. Set it onto the counter and wiped my forehead. Come take a seat, I'll serve it up. Yuri nodded and set down her knitting needles. I grabbed the plates, silverware, and napkins. Want a drink? I can get myself water. You've done so much, the least I could do is get my own drink. I shrugged. Meh, suit yourself. I grabbed a spatula and brought the meal over to the table. I set it on a pot holder so I didn't ruin said table. This is an old family recipe. It's just a chicken noodle casserole, but I promise it's really good. I gave her the spatula and served herself a portion. I don't doubt your ability, Finn. Thank you for the meal. It looks very good. I nodded. Of course, we both began to eat, and as we did, I pleasantly surprised after every bite. I really knocked this thing out of the park. Grandmama would be proud. <laughs> oh, good old grandmama. Bless her heart. I set down my fork and grabbed another serving. Glob, dang. Uh, though as I began to eat, I also noticed Yuri also go for another serving. And then another. As I finished my second, Yuri was grabbing a smaller fourth serving. She was practically vacuuming this stuff down. 
Though I think you already noticed me watching because she began to slow down. She looked. She even looked slightly embarrassed. Aw, don't worry, Yuri. Feel free. Get some more. Uh, there's no harm in that. That was. Uh, very good. Thank you. I smiled. One minute, though. I'll be right back. Yuri stood up, walked out of the kitchen, and went down the hall. Probably had to go use the bathroom or something. Would make sense. I began to clean up her dishes. She seemed done and so was I. Dang, we had no leftovers. Impressive. Most impressive. I set the dishes in the sink. Oh, you know what? I have the... I have... What? P.O.M. Palm in my backpack. I can go grab it while she's in the bathroom, and when she comes back, we can read it together. Oh, Portrait of Markov, right. I nodded to myself. I exited the kitchen and walked to the hallway. But as I passed by the bathroom, I heard retching. Is that Riri? Retching? Oh no. I don't think she's going to. No way. I tried to open the door, but it's locked. She retched again, and I heard liquid. She wasn't throwing up. I began to knock rapidly. Yuri! Yuri! What? Then? Yuri, are you okay? My dinner didn't make you sick, did it? Uh, no. Well then? I just ate too much too quick. I'm going to be alright. In fact, I'm feeling better already. You were feeling bad before? Just some mild nausea. But I promise I'll, I'm okay. Uh, alright. If you're sure. I'm very thankful that you're concerned, but I'm swell. Alright, I get it. I sighed and continued on to my bedroom. What was that? Even if what she said was true, she did eat a lot. I'm still skeptical. Yep, I'm s very skeptical that she's literally cutting herself in my bathroom. I opened my door. I don't know what it was, but I felt like she wasn't telling me everything. Maybe she really did get sick and is trying to protect my feelings? Uh, no, it could have been my cooking. I'm feeling fine and we both ate it. Maybe. Maybe she just has some kind of stomach issue. One she's scared to tell me about. It's either that and, of course, her addiction of cutting. Would fit for her. Yuri isn't the most confident girl. Even if I said I wouldn't mock her interests, she probably isn't fully confident that I'll look past underlying conditions. Even if it's just a stomach issue. I shook my head and unzipped my bag. Yuri can tell me when she wants to. I just hope she knows I'll accept her for who she is, regardless of her conditions. I grabbed out the book and ex exited the bathroom shortly after. I walked back to my living room and sat on the couch. Yuri walked out of the bathroom shortly after. She rushed over to sit next to me. S sorry about that. It's okay. I can understand eating too much. I do it all the time. <laughs> yeah, even though I'm a chowder, it happens sometimes. I grinned and she smiled. So, um, you wanna read some of the book? I held up Portrait. I'm on the second to last chapter, I believe. So we're almost done. That's great. That means we're getting close to my favorite part. She turned and got comfortable as I opened the book. He grabbed one aside and I grabbed the other. Granted, we had to use our laps as a makeshift table, but that wasn't so bad. I smiled internally at our closeness and began to read. <laughs> a good old reading session with Yuri. Nothing wrong with that, right? It was a few hours later. Honestly, I was surprised Yuri was still with me. It was nearing 22, yet she stuck around. I assume that's around 10, I think. 
Yeah, I think it is 10. I turned to her. Don't you have to be getting home soon? He raised an eyebrow. I should be, yes. But I want to do something first. What's that? She became bashful. Well, um, it's something I want to show you. My face began to heat up. No, not anything like that! Fellow knights, what are you guys thinking when Yuri is going to show her, show me something? Don't get any f funny ideas, alright? It's just something important to me. I know we haven't been dating very long and I think I've, we've gotten enough, close enough as friends and lovers. So if, if you could grab a jacket, I would really appreciate it. A jacket? Are we going somewhere? She nodded. At this time of night, she nodded again. It's better at night, trust me. Uh... Okay... We trust you on this one, Yuri. Go ahead, take the lead. I have one on my coat rack. I stood up from the couch. Lead the way, my fair maiden. Hey! <laughs> you go, man. As she giggled and stood up. I walked over to the front door and grabbed my hoodie. After shoving it on, I opened up the front door. Yuri walked past me and out the door and then I followed shortly after. I closed the door and locked it behind me. So, where are we headed? This way. She grabbed my hand and we walked off. Uh. After a few minutes, she realized she had grabbed my hand. Uh, sorry. And she dropped my hand. But I grabbed her hand again. Wait, why are you? You're my girlfriend, aren't you? And I'm your boyfriend. You're supposed to hold hands. He seemingly hesitated. But eventually, she smiled. She laced her fingers with mine and we walked on. Hmm. After a few minutes of walking, I spoke out loud. So, where exactly are we going? You'll see. I nodded. Um, alright. That's very ominous, Han. But I'll trust you. After a few more minutes, we were part in the suburbs that I'd never been in. And I was getting slightly nervous. I know Yuri wouldn't lead me to a torture society or anything. What? But this is unfamiliar territory. Yuri? I turned to her. Yes? Where are we? I know I asked where we were going, but where, where are we ex currently? I've never been in this area before. Oh, it's just an area close to my house. There's nothing to be worried about. It's a safe neighborhood. Internally, I sighed in relief. I was getting myself worked up over nothing. This way. <laughs> He's not like that, come on now. She allowed us down an alleyway between two houses. Vines grew on the walls to the sides of us, and I felt like we were going into the depths of the suburbs. Like it was some circle of hell. I chuckled to myself. That's an interesting concept, huh? It is. Yuri stopped and then began to mess with a padlocked gate. What? I wasn't paying much attention though. It was stuck in my own head. That would could be a funny parody book. <laughs> and that would be a fun read as well and maybe a song or something like that. If I ever try my hand at writing, I bet that concept would catch a little bit of attention. I would have to write it well though. The padlock fell off the gate and Yuri kicked it to the side. Uh, did she just pick the lock? Yuri, wasn't that a locked gate? Uh, um, no. Yuri, did you just pick that lock? Or did you have a key? She sighed. I, uh, I had a key. I talked to the owner of this house if I to see if I could get one and she granted my request. But why? What's behind this gate that needs to be locked? You'll see. I deeply inhaled. The suspense is killing me, babe. Please just tell me. Uh. uh 
You're... Babe? I froze. Did she really have to get hung up on that? I mean, come on now, since both of you are couples, so... There's nothing wrong calling each other pen names, you know that, right? <laughs> yeah. Just always wanted to curl, call a girl that. This is really embarrassing. Dang it, Yuri. Oh. Is that a problem? I cannot call you that if you want. No. I jumped slightly. Huh. Sorry. You mean, um... No. Please, call me that. As you wish. I like it. Uh... Duly noted. What the heck just happened? Was I freaking out or was Yuri? Maybe it's both. Anyway, just follow me, okay? Where we're going is very special to me, and I just want you to not be... not to be disappointed before we get there, okay? It's not exactly exciting. I sighed heavily. Yuri, I'm sure that whatever it is, I put my hand on her shoulder. I'm sure that whatever it is, it's lovely. Because what's special to you is special to me. <laughs> what's mine is yours. I smiled. Finn. She rubbed my head softly. That really means a lot, you know? I felt like a child as he rubbed my head. Just because you're taller doesn't mean you're older, dang it. She took her hand off my head and nodded at the gate. I grabbed her hand and we continued on. I had to know. Oh! I guess it looks like we're in the... Uh, the familiar forest that we've seen in Blue Skies and any other mod. Yuri, how old are you? 18. Why? Son of a... <laughs> Oh boy. Oh, and another familiar park that we've seen in Blue Skies as well. Oh, the memories taking out Sayori on this, uh, on this lovely night after our white day date. I love you, Sayori. Oh ho! We confessed! Yes! Well, that's it now. Those three words have been spoken. Uh. Um. <laughs> Um, Sayori.exe has stopped responding. I'm sorry if that came out of the blue or... I love you too, Finn. Oh my god! <laughs> oh. One of my favorite uh, good endings and, well, moments in, uh, in DDLC mod history by far. Uh, <laughs> well, if you guys want to check that out, go ahead right here. Sorry for the shameless plug, I'm just saying because uh, after we passed a bit of foliage, the path opened up more. And at the sight, I caught off my own thoughts. Uh, oh, wow. Holy crap. I muttered and Yuri giggled. Right? I turned to her. Oh, glob, Yuri. How did you find this place? She began to walk further along, still holding my hand. She exhaled, clearly revealing in her state of body, mind and body. Well, I used to come here all the time when I was a little girl. Whether it would be come to play with the other kids, or to read a book under a tree, or to enjoy a picnic with my family, or to just... to just be here. It slowly became my happy place. Somewhere I could go just to turn, just to get away from the trials and tribulations of normal life. And to actually answer your question, I'm not sure. I believe it was my mother, but that's not really why it's an important place. It's just... Is this why you wanted to show it to me? You said it was important to you. She nodded. It is. And I wanted you to know about it, so we could... She cleared her throat. So we could make it an even happier place for the both of us. I stared at Yuri as she spoke. Uh, I smiled. You're adorable, Yuri. What? That's not true. 
Natsuki and Sayori are adorable, but just average. Not like when you're acting like a kid and all, you really are adorbs. And yes, Sayori and Natsuki are adorbs as well. You're not just average though. You're Yuri, aka you're perfect. She smiled, but she, she blushed, but smiled. Well, I thank you. I nodded. You're always welcome. I rubbed her hand and we continued walking down the path. And I felt it. The stress. The troubles. The pain. All of the stress of these last few months. Joining the club, the festival, dating Monica, breaking up with Monica, and even dating Yuri. My life has been a dream come true recently. Yeah, after what happened last time, I, I guess things aren't so bad after all. But hopefully, 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 hopefully Monica will get better after what happened. But it's also been heckish for that reason. I constantly felt as if I had to impress Yuri. The same with everyone else. I know I don't have to. I never had to when we were friends. She always liked me, even with my weird quirks. But I feel I owe it to her. I owe her to be the best version of myself. And heck, I even wanted to be the best version of myself. I want to change for Yuri, of course. But I want to do it for myself, too. I want to read books. I want to eat more than TV dinners. I want to be clean and want to be less of a slob. I just never had the drive to dry. Uh, until her. I squeezed her hand. Did I ever tell you that you're amazing, Yuri? What? Why say that all of a sudden? I shrugged. It just felt like saying it. Well, thank you. After a few moments, she began to lead us down a different path. I know that the entire park was a happy place of mine, but there's one spot in particular I want to show you. My actual happy place. I nodded and she smiled. Lead the way. I don't know what this uh, this happy place would be, but we'll see about that because it's an adventure. <laughs> um, adventure time with Finn and Yuri in this episode, I suppose. She went off the path. <laughs> she went off the path completely and took me deeper into the trees. Down a path, over a log, across a small creek, and into a more open spot. Looks all right. Very comfy. And is that a crate of books? This is where I come specifically to read. The atmosphere is perfect, night or day. And I know I've already said it, but this place is very special to me. Aww, that's cute! Um, question why is MC so short? He looks like a, um, he looks like a shorty here. I'm just saying though, no to, not to offend uh, midgets or shorties or anything, but still. <laughs> Guys, whatever it is in your head, don't get any weird ideas right now with this. It's just, no, 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 no! Ah! <laughs> ah! No! No more of those dirty thoughts! Stop it! She brought her arms around my neck and rested her chin on my head. I wrapped my arms around her as well. She sighed. And you're special to me too. You're the most important person in my life. So I figured... I hugged tighter and rubbed my arms along her back. I understand. Thank you. She kept her head on me and I felt comfort, safety, like, like nothing bad could happen. As long as we were, as long as we were with each other, as long as we were there for each other. Of course, of course. I'll do it. I'll be an amazing guy. I'll be the best guy, the best boyfriend, the best one ever. Just to see her smile. Of course, all for Yuri.
And we're back at Monica's uh, bedroom right now. I just really hope she's okay. It hurts. It still hurts. It's been more than a week now. I know it won't pass in only a week. But the wounds are still so fresh. Like it happened yesterday. Every day, she finds herself crying. Or at least, tearing up in some way. She feels like she'll run out of tears eventually. It's not healthy. I'm borderline obsessed with him. Uh, but why? What's so appealing? What's so appealing about that loser? Before the literature club, he was a borderline incel. And neat. Yet, she still loved him. She put her hands in, she put her head in her hands. Why? Why is she cursed with this one-sided love? We're thinking about him again, aren't you? She turned to the door where her father stood. No, I... He raised an eyebrow. Uh, yes, I am. I'm sorry, Papa, but I... Up, up, up. Hey, he put a hand up. You have nothing to apologize for, sweetie. He walked into the room and puts his hands on her shoulders. Now look, it's not easy to just get all over with this. Closure is tough. She stood up quickly and hugged him tight. She just needed something to hold on to. Needed an anchor. He kissed the top of her head. I think you should go talk to him. Her eyes shot open. What? But, Dad... Hey, it's okay. You don't have to right now. It's just a suggestion, is all. She sighed and put her head back onto his chest. Now, how about we go get some ice cream? He looked at her face and wiped some tears away. Just something to try and cheer my girl. She giggled. That's your solution for everything. He chuckled and kissed her head again. If it, ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, as they say. He smiled. I love you, honey. And I want you to see you happy. I never want you to forget that. She nodded and stopped smiling. I know you do. She looked down. I just wish he did, too. He rubbed her head and she sighed. Just give it time. Exactly, like I said in one of the previous episodes, just give it time. Things will turn out to be okay, and like I said, we'll just be friends and stay friends. Or stay as friends, rather. She smiled softly and hugged her dad tighter. I love you. Hmm. Like father and daughter. I groaned as someone shook me awake. What the heck? So early. Merry Christmas. After I heard that, I smiled. Wait, why is she in my house? My eyes opened. Oh. What? Are you not happy to see me? What? No. I sat up and beckoned her to me. She set down her purse and I gave her a hug. I'm very happy to see my one and only on this beautiful Christmas morning. I'm very happy too. She sniffed the air. I would be happier if you put on some deodorant though. She pulled away and I gasped in mock offense. My own girlfriend, calling me smelly. However will I... <laughs> however will I recover? Oh no, I didn't mean to... She stopped. You're just messing with me, aren't you? I smiled and nodded. She sighed. <laughs> ah, MC, you jokester. You're lucky you're so cute. Now it was my turn to get flustered. I didn't expect that. Anyway. I chuckled. Even when she's the one teasing, she still ends up getting embarrassed. You're getting there, Yuri. I'm going to let you get dressed, and then we can proceed with our day plans. Sound good? Day plans? Yes, Finn. Our day plans. Uh... 
we talked it over the phone. All oh, right, right. Those plans. Sorry, tired brain. She giggled. Well, would you like a refresher? Nah, I know what we're doing. <laughs> so, so Christmas is tomorrow. Indeed it is. Want to do something with me? Or do you want to spend it with your family? You, please. Any particular reason why? Your dad a jerk or something? Uh, I don't have parents, Finn. Oh. Oh my. You don't? No, I live with my aunt. But she's usually away on business, this Christmas included. So it's either I spend time with you or I'm alone. I bit my tongue to slap myself from saying a teasing remark. She isn't good with those, I have to remember that. Well, alright then. What would you like to do? My schedule is open. Well, first, we should come over and open each other's gifts. Alright. After that, maybe lunch. Sounds good. Uh, wait. Every restaurant is gonna be closed. It's Christmas. I'll figure something out. Just leave it to me. Okay. I trust you, babe. I heard her blush. <laughs> Still not used to that. She cleared her throat. But after that, I was thinking we could visit the girls and tell them Merry Christmas. Alright. Anything else? I think that's it. Unless if you want to cook something. You mentioned something about that. Yeah. I got a ham in the fridge. Great. We can eat that and then just relax for the rest of the night. Maybe watch a movie? Alright. Sounds like a plan. Well, so far so good for Christmas. Uh, things are turning out to be okay. Huh. <sighs> I'm sure this will be the best Christmas ever. Well, aside from the other one, you know, but since this is Yuri, I'm sure it will be the best Christmas with Yuri, and of course already had the best with Sayori, let's face it, wink wink. <laughs> uh.